Hi, in this presentation, we are going to introduce decision trees, both for classification and for regression. Decision trees are very interesting to study because they are fundamental building blocks of very advanced and powerful methods such as random forest and gradient boosted trees. And those uh, powerful methods, gradient, boost, uh, gradient boosted trees and random forest, are often the best performing method when working with tabular datasets. So let me start uh, with uh, a couple of de definitions. So what is a decision tree? And then uh, I will give some intuition on how uh, we can train trees both for classification and for regression tasks, depending on whether or not the output variable is continuous. And then I will quickly mention the impact of the size of the tree on the overfitting behavior of the tree or the generalization performance of the model. So first, the definition. So in the first notebook, we had uh, a specific example in mind for the income of uh, members of the United States population. And by just looking at the data, we could derive a set of decision rules to help us uh, classify uh, people into different groups of income. So for instance, we could uh, select the age variable of the person and tell whether or not the person is more than 28.5 years old. Uh, if it's younger, then we could predict a low income. And if it's higher, we had to consider a second variable, such as the number of hours per week that, has, that is being worked by the person. And if it's lower than 40 hours per week, we could predict low income. And if it's higher, uh, then high income. Okay. So the set of hierarchical structure decision rules based on one variable at a time is what we call a decision tree in, in uh, machine learning. And each time we have two possible outcome. And for one given data point, we've just asked the, the question for each variable and then follow the arrows depending on the answer. And when we reach a leaf node, of the tree, uh, we have the, the prediction for that specific uh, data point. Okay, so the trees have uh, either nodes uh, such as the root node, which are decision nodes or split nodes because they split the data into two subsets, and uh, the the final node are called the leaves of the tree, the leaf nodes, and they hold the prediction values. Okay. So this is a decision tree that we could design, design by hand, for instance. But now I would like to introduce how to train to find automatically the structure and the value of the threshold and the value of the predictions uh, from the training set. So how to grow a classification tree. So let's start with the, the, uh, uh, the use case of a classification problem. So here we have a small data set. And you see we have two groups of data points. Uh, that can be either orange or blue. So the goal is to predict the color, so the class of the data point. And we have two input features, x0 and x1, and they are numerical variables, so continuous variables for the input features. So we can represent them in a 2D space, in a plane. So here we start with the root, uh, the decision node of the decision tree, uh, the root node of the decision tree, which is to uh, consider a split of the data set, a vertical split of the data set, meaning that we will select a value of x0 that, that can be taken on uh, anywhere in the range of possible values for x0. So here, uh, the algorithm decides to take this specific value of x0 and then to partition the training data into two subsets, what is on the left and what is on the right. And if you consider all the data points that are on the left, the majority of them is blue. So this simple decision tree will predict blue for the left uh, child, for the left leaf node of the tree after the split. And on the right hand side, you see the majority of the data points are orange. So we'll predict orange. Alternatively, instead of predicting blue or orange, we could predict class probabilities. And in this case, we could count the number of blue data points here and the number of orange data points on the left. 
and uh, divide by the total number of data points uh, on the left to output the probability of being blue or the probability of being orange when we are on the left of that uh, threshold for x0. Okay, and we do the same for the, the right hand side. So here you see that after the first split, uh, we haven't successfully uh, partitioned the, the two groups. They are, they are still mixed groups. So the, the probability is not equi exactly one for blue. It's, for instance, uh, 0 0.85, something like this. Uh, so what we can do is uh, develop the tree further by considering this node. And instead of just predicting blue here, we can uh, split this subset of the data uh, and uh, insert a new decision node in the tree. So here, the optimal way to split this subset of the data is to horiz uh, horizontally split, this time using a threshold on x1 at a given position for x1. And in this case, you see that we've successfully separated all the blue points from the orange point. So now we can make the final prediction and those prediction have 100% accuracy on the training set. There is no prediction error on the training set for those two leaf nodes, okay? We can do the same for the, the right hand side because here you see it's still not uh, perfectly separated. So we replace this leaf node by a decision node, a split node. And again, we split on X1 to find a separation. And you see that here there is a specific value of X1 that allows us to separate completely the, the two groups with just one split, okay? So automatically, the algorithm selects the variable and the value of the threshold that makes it possible to best separate the two groups. So there is a quantity which is called the entropy or the Gini score that makes it possible to quantify how good a split is. And automatically, the algorithm will find the the, the, the best threshold value to maximize the, the improvement in the uh, entropy after the split, before and after the split. You compute the, the evolution of the entropy before and after the split, and you find the best split this way. Uh, it's often possible that uh, a two-level tree like this one is not enough. So uh, on more complex data sets, you could imagine that we would need to, to grow a deeper tree to be able to perfectly separate the training set. OK, so we can apply the same set of ideas to regression trees. This time, the goal would be to predict a continuous variable instead of uh, class values. So here, to simplify the representation, we just consider only one input in the feature space, x, x. And uh, we have the target value, which is this time continuous. So it's represented on the y-axis here. And the dark data point, the black data points, are the training uh, data. So for each value of x, we have the value of y, and we'll put a, a point here. So how to build a regression tree using this data? So here again, we start with the root node, which is a decision node, uh, a split. And here, we just have one input variable. So we, we are forced to find a split value for x. So we can split on all the lo possible location of x. And here, the algorithm decides to split here at this specific value of x. And on the left-hand side of that split, we will compute the average value of all the y of, of uh, the average value of the y target variable for all the data points that are on the left with respect to the x variable. And we compute the same average uh, for all the, the points that are on the right. So here, the, the blue line represents the average uh, value of all the points in that region left on the split of the split and here the average value of all the points uh, right of the split so you see that this value is lower and this value is higher so this is represented by uh, a dark blue for a strong value of y and a light blue for a, a lower value of average value of y here okay so the the prediction function of our regression model with just one split is just this uh, step function, which is basically constant piecewise. It predicts a constant value on this region and another constant value on this region. So you see that this constant piecewise prediction function is only loosely approximating this uh, curvy shape. So 
here we can guess that the model uh, is not fine enough to, to, to capture the, the, the structure of the data. If we had uh, tried to fit a linear model on this, we, it would have been a straight line, uh, but even a linear model would not work well either because there is this curvy shape. So you can see that a linear model will have underfitted. So we need a nonlinear model. And so maybe regression trees are better, but you see that regression trees with just one single split is not much better because it's still uh, making significant prediction error in, in those regions. Okay, so we can refine this decision tree by again splitting the leaf nodes further by taking additional uh, decisions. So here, for instance, we decide to split to add a new threshold value for the x variable uh, for low values of the x value variable here. So, and we partition the space into two subgroups, two additional subgroups. So the extreme uh, left hand side and the middle group here. Okay. And we compute the average value of the middle group. So it's slightly higher than previously. So this is uh, represented by the very strong dark blue here. And here we have uh, an inter intermediate value, which is uh, for, for the Y value here, which is represented by this dark shade of blue here. And we can do the same for, for this side. And uh, we had an, an, a new split and you see that we can refine the shape. So if you introduce more and more splits, you see that each time we do a new split, we introduce a new leaf node. And the more leaf node you have, the more levels we can predict. And you see that progressively here, the green, uh, the green uh, prediction function is starting to approximate the curvy shape of the, the training set, okay? So how much should we, uh, how deep should we grow the trees? Uh, is it fine to go until the end or we should stop, should we stop uh, before uh, 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 splitting each individual data point in the training set, okay? So this is the topic of overfitting because as we will see, if we grow the tree too deep, uh, then we will see that it uh, impacts the generalization performance badly. Okay, so let's visualize this again on a similar data, data set for regression. So here we have both the training data point in black and the test data point uh, in gray. Okay, we have many more test data points um, in, in this case. So if we use uh, a number of uh, splits, which is uh, two here in this case, two, two thresholds, one here and one here, oops. Uh, then we have four, uh, no, three uh, leaf nodes. So three levels for the prediction. And you see that here, both on the trend set and on the test set, we have significant prediction error. Like here we predict at this position, uh, but the actual measurements are much lower, okay? Uh, both for the training set and the test set. Here we predict at this value, but the actual uh, measurements are uh, on average uh, significantly larger. Okay, so here we can see that the model is underfitting. It cannot capture the, the structure of the data. Okay, both on the training set and on the test set. And so uh, because the training error is large, so the test error is also large, and we say that the model is underfitting. So we need to add more splits. And if we add many more uh, leaf nodes, you can see that the curve is being refined and now it can successfully approximate uh, the, 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 the training data. And also you, you, can, you can imagine that measuring the, the average distance between the gray point and the prediction function is approximately the same as the average dis, uh, distance uh, between the uh, black point and the prediction function, which means that the, ten the test error and the train error uh, are approximately the same, which means that the model is not much uh, overfitting. It's not overfitting, okay? And it doesn't seem to be significantly underfitting either. So it, it's probably a good model, a good trade-off. If we develop the tree further, uh, we can make it such that at some point, uh, all the black data points will be perfectly predicted by the decision tree. We can introduce as many leaves as, as we want, such that at the end, in each leaf of the tree, we will have one single uh, training point. Okay, And if we do this, you can see that then the prediction function has many small oscillations 
oscillations, which, perf which perfectly fit the noise of the training data. And when we do this, you see that uh, this is causing uh, overfitting because uh, here the training error is exactly zero. We predict exactly all the training data points, but you see that the average uh, difference between this value here and all the, the gray uh, data points that are below is uh, uh, significantly larger than on this one. Okay. There is an average difference here for only for the gray data points and not for the black data points. So it means that the test error is larger, significantly larger than the train error, and the train error is exactly zero in this case. So we see that this, this model is overfitting. So to summarize, underfitting, trade-off, overfitting, and this is caused by a bad, bad choice of the, the maximum depth of the decision tree or the maximum number of leaf nodes. In scikit-learn, you can decide whether or not you want to control for the maximum depth or the maximum uh, number of leaf nodes. Uh, you have the two possibilities. And they have an equivalent uh, impact on the uh, controlling the underfitting versus overfitting trade. -off. OK. So a couple of take home messages. So decision trees are just a simple uh, uh, sequence of decision rules. At each time, we select one variable and one threshold value for that variable. And we split the data into two subsets based on the threshold. And for each subset, we can re-split again and again and again. Okay. And so at prediction time, we start from the root and we follow all the decision function left or right uh, until we reach one of the leaf of the tree and we make the prediction based on the leaf value. Okay. So the leaf values can either be, uh, for classification probabilities, which is the fraction of the training set of the colors uh, observed on the training set that reached that specific uh, leaf value, or the average uh, value for regression. Um, and we predict this way. Uh, decision trees are nice when we work with uh, tabular data. Uh, especially with numerical features, because it's not important to, to scale uh, the, the numerical features to be approximately on the same scale. Uh, here, we consider one feature at a time, and we find the optimal threshold for that feature at a time. So if we had rescaled one, one given features by a factor of 10, for instance, it's just the optimal threshold will be also scaled by a factor of 10, but the decision will be exactly the same. Okay, we do not need to have all the, the, the numerical values on the same scales as we did for, for linear models. So when we work with tabular data with heterogeneous columns that have a very different meaning, for instance, one con column could be a temperature in Celsius, another column could be uh, a number of citizens in a city, another column could be the, the average weight in kilograms of the citizens, for instance. Uh, uh, then they have naturally very different scales. And decision trees do not really care about this. And so they, they are really well suited for this kind of tabular data uh, with uh, heterogeneous uh, typed variables. OK. Um, so uh, just one more word on this. This is probably one reason why they are so successful for successful for, for tabular data uh, compared to, uh, for instance, uh, linear model, kernel machine, or neural networks. Uh, if we grow the tree too deep, then we have the problem of overfitting. And so therefore, it's often recommended to try to tune this hyperparameter of the maximum depth uh, to try to find a trade-off between underfitting and overfitting. Okay? Or you can alternatively uh, use the maximum number of leaf nodes. And finally, uh, I just wanted to emphasize that individual decision trees uh, usually are are too coarse in their decision function uh, because they are constant piecewise predictors. And um, usually they are too limiting. Even for the best optimal trade-off uh, for the depth, for the best depth, um, they, they are not very good uh, individually. And uh, they are only useful when used as a building block for uh, more powerful models that we call ensembles of models, such as random forest and gradient boosted trees, uh, which are often the, the best models that you can fit on tabular datasets. Uh, so 
the, the topic of uh, random forest and uh, gradient boosted will be presented in a, a future module. Uh, but in the meantime, it's important to really understand the building block. So really understand the, the behavior of individual decision trees. And then later we will introduce how to combine them together to build an ensemble. Thank you very much for your attention.